the work that's been happening here in PV Grows in the spirit of and inspired by Slow Money um, has been excellent, but has not been really happening in very much of a, a public space, or at least this is, this is the first time we've had uh, a session where anybody can come and say, um, what could we get out of being a chapter of Slow Money, and what do I, what do I want to get out of that, and what do I want to put into it? So that's, that's my take on the purpose of this session today. Um, we have some great uh, presenters that you're going to hear from. I'm going to hand the mic, and when I introduce uh, Tom, he will introduce the next presenter and so on. And then um, we're going to hear uh, from Pioneer Valley folks, and then we're going to hear from Slow Money National one person, and then we're going to hear from the Greater Boston Slow Money chapter. So we'll get these different scales, uh, different regions and different scales of slow money work. Um, and then we have 45 minutes for us to engage with each other about what we want to get out of this and where we go from here. So that's it. I'm going to uh, hand it off to, when I say inspired by slow money, um, that means um, a few people <coughs> were on the ground floor with that. Uh, with those initial conversations and brought that enthusiasm here to the Pioneer Valley. And uh, that's how I see Tom Willits, who's going to talk to us first. The formation of PV Grows is now over three years is sort of bringing a network together. What we were just talking about earlier in looking at slow money and sort of the slow money model. What, we have the benefit of having a group that has come together as a network with PV Grows that it includes sort of institutions, and, and when I say that, I mean CISA and MDAR and, and, and uh, uh, thank you, NESFI, um, Equity Trust. This is these different organizations that do a lot of the work in the ag space. And so we weren't just modeling it as individuals which the slow money model is more that, that, that a group of individuals get together think about what they want to do to change or, or to enhance the, the, a new economic agricultural based food system um, financing model. And finance is, is a significant part of that. And so in that case, it, there's a little bit of a difference in sort of the way PV Grows was founded and that slow money exi exists. And we felt that it was really important finally at this point because the slow money chapters, which are there are, and Michael will speak to this all over the country, have, have a, a way that they are doing what they're doing, which is really important for all of us here to know about. We've never been sort of outside the slow money space as PV grows. We really found ourselves to be working, as, as, uh, as Sam said, in a symbiotic sort of way. Um, but it was time. It's just time to sort of open, open up that that uh, information to everybody in the valley and have people sort of understand more how slow money works, how PV grows works, and how we really see them working together. And uh, we're really excited by that. We're really excited that you're all here. And I hope um, by the end of today that you have a much keener understanding of slow money and then make sure that we've made the connections for you of how you all can um, interact within that. So. Do you want to talk about specifically what we've done on the finance side? Sure. This is my compadre, Jeff Rosen and I. We, we came together as two different foundations. I'm with the Liddy B. Stokes Foundation, he with Solidago and with the Francis Fund, and sort of helped catalyze some of the beginnings of this with dollars in on a grant side. So take it away. Myself. Thank you, Tom. So um, for me, the beginning of this conversation goes back to 2004, maybe, at Investor Circle when I first met Tom. And I sent him several emails, and he blew me off. Um, <laughs> but we forget that part of history. Um, and at the same time, um, conversations are happening all over. And one of the conversations that he and I both were participating in was the beginning of the slow money conversation. And just this central question that everybody was asking is, how do I get my own personal investment dollars out into my local food system? And in the beginning, we just thought it was simple. We'll call around to the other communities around the country and figure out what they're doing. And we'll just borrow some of those models and we'll fit them here. And we discovered, much to our surprise, there really weren't a lot of models. That very few communities were organized um, either as a collaborative on a whole food system model or on an investment side. And that really, at that point in time, none had combined the two. And so as partners in the funding community, we set out and asked the question, what do people in the Pioneer Valley feel like they need 
to bring this very powerful CSA farmers market scale local food movement to the next scale to be a regional economic driver um, and to really be uh, transformative. What, what's necessary? And what people in the Pioneer Valley basically said was, not another organization. No matter what you do, we do not want another organization. And so that's the collaborative part of PV Grows is it's designed to bring, bring people together to amplify the work they're already doing and not to replicate. Um, and that's resulted in these kinds of gatherings. And at the same time, we were really interested in this, how do you aggregate meaningful capital question? And so our first approach was the loan fund. And to start with a loan fund that's administered at Common Capital, formerly WMEF, which is designed to finance these infrastructure businesses. That's the jargony phrase that we've used. Um, the small food enterprises that are necessary to fill a lot of the gaps in the local food system. And so we set out trying to finance a number of those and decided the best way to do it was with a pilot loan fund, professionally administered, to really get a better understanding of the system, the weaknesses, the strengths, to really do the inventory as a practitioner, um, and then to lead us into the next stage, which is the community capital fund, which is a way for individual investors to put their money to work in the local food system, which is still in development. Whoever said it's only a few months away um, was a little overzealous, and I guess it was me. Um, <laughs> but um, it's a ways away. And so what's happened is because we focused on the loan fund and on the community capital project, we've never really allowed a portal for individuals to access entrepreneurs to create deal stage investment opportunity. And that's what the slow money chapters around the country have been working on. They've worked more on this connecting individuals two deals and they've had showcases and you'll hear from Slow Money Boston, you'll hear from Michael Bartner, a little bit more about the way that that individual connection has worked. And so we saw a real opportunity to bring in another layer of capital through this portal now, knowing we have a loan fund, we have lending partners, knowing we still have every intention of in a relatively near term coming up with a community capital fund. And then also we would like to have this um, slow money chapter defining spaces that it might want to work in, um, you know, and that's a, a little broader topic. It's crowdfunding. It's, it's who knows what, right? I mean, people need to figure that out. How do you match up individuals with entrepreneurs, get people back investment returns, get entrepreneurs the kind of capital under the terms they need. It's a work in progress across the country, and it's great to be part of the slow money network because you get to hear everybody right on the edge of their learning curve as everybody's pioneering this work. So. That's my transition to Michael to talk about the national. My first introduction to Slow Money was actually um, 10 years ago. Um, I, um, at the, the very far end of the, the state from here, I was on Chappaquiddick, um, and at the time working with, with Woody Tash, who, who wrote um, this book here. H how many of you are familiar with um, inquiries into the nature of Slow Money? Nice, nice most, most of you. Um, for those of you who are not, you are, um, I will share a little bit of a, um, paragraph or two. Um, the problems we, th we face with respect to soil fertility, biodiversity, food quality, and local economies are not primarily cons problems of technology. They are problems of finance. In a financial system organized to op optimize the efficient use of capital, we should not be surprised to end up with cheapened food, millions of acres of GMO corn, billions of food miles, dying main streets, kids who think food comes from supermarkets, an obesity epidemic side by side with persistent hunger. There is such a thing as money that is too fast. Money that is too fast is money that has become so detached from people, place, and, that, and the activities that it is financing that not even the experts understand it fully. Money that is too fast makes it impossible to say whether the world economy is going through a correction in the credit markets triggered by the subprime mortgage crisis or whether we are teetering on the edge of something much deeper and more challenging, tied to petrodollars, derivatives, hedge funds, futures, arbitrage, and a Byzantine hyper-securitized system of intermediation that no quant, no program trader, no speculator, no investment bank CEO can any longer fully understand or manage. Just as no one can say precisely where the meat in a hamburg hamburger comes from, does anyone know? <laughs> It may contain meat from hundreds, even thousands, people say, of animals. No one can say where the money in this or that security has come from, where it is going, what is behind it, whether, if it were stopped, and like a hot potato held by someone for more than a few instants, it represents any intrinsic or real value. 
money that is too fast creates an environment in which, when questioned by the press about the outcome of the, of the credit crisis, former Treasury Secretary Robert Rubin can only respond, nobody knows. So slow money, it really did emerge out of the, out of the thought leadership of Woody Tash um, way back. Um, I mean, he's been thinking about this stuff for, for 30 years. He was a foundation treasurer. Um, and um, when he started putting this in, in the public domain a bit more, you know, obviously a lot of people are thinking um, these sort of ideas. Um, and it's, it's just created a, a huge, um, a huge uh, well, one of our, our chapter leaders says um, uh, it's created pra prairie fire fires all over the country. So he, you know, he, he envisions it like that. So, um, so now we're up to 14 chapters um, around the United States. Um, uh, Pioneer Valley is actually one of them. Um, um, and we've had $16.5 million invested in 102 small food enterprises around the United States. Um, so you can see we're um, going up with uh, Facebook um, as the, uh, users. The principles have been a great organizing tool because it, um, you have to put in your zip code. Um, and w so once you sign, you put in your zip code and then we, we share um, uh, uh, that list um, with our chapter leaders. So that's a great way to just tap into um, building community. Um, so of that um, 16.5 million, about a, uh, two thirds of that are loans um, done um, mostly at a really small scale. Okay. So this is um, uh, from Maine, um, a company called Northern Girl, um, which is a frozen vegetable um, processing company. Um, th this was actually an equity investment. So uh, the other third um, of the 16.5 million was equity and um, a lot of this. But um, so slow money, Chris Hallweaver, who's quoted here, um, he actually found out about um, this uh, this company at a slow money main meeting. Um, um, it's it's run by uh, two women who um, are a part of something called. Um, <coughs> um, uh, why am I spacing out? Yeah, Crown and Maine. Thank you, Alex. Probably. Um, uh, so Crown and Maine is a, um, a distribution company in in Maine that's that's um, doing organic um, uh, vegetables and and. Um, Northern Girl um, came about because uh, there was extra vegetables, and so they thought, well, why, why don't we freeze them? So, um, great example. Uh, Main Grains, um, it's an organic mill um, up in Skowhegan. So was, this was loans, um, and uh, Slow Money Main Network also ha helped facilitate $350,000 of grants for this company. Um, so it's local grain. Again, we, we heard there's similarities, right, between what's what's happening here in Pioneer Valley and what's happening in Maine. You know, the idea of you know needing for distribution, uh, processing, um, grain, um, all all different types of um, building a healthy local food system. Um, so this is the. Um, uh, the investment club that they started in Maine. Um, so, so Slow Money Maine, they meet once every other month up in Augusta. And they've had $2.7 million now as a group go, in, go into 35 small food enterprises. It's really, it's really hopping. Um, no Small Potatoes um, is their investment club. So everyone, what in, they pioneered this model. Now, now it's happening in five other places. And Julia will tell you, and Eric will tell you about what's happening in Boston. Um, they've took this model, but it's a $5,000 minimum from 20 uh, members and they're loaning it out. Um, and uh, this is, you don't have to be an accredited investor to do this. It's um, as long as everyone gets a fair vote, then um, the SEC is okay with it. Um, down in North Carolina, um, they've done a number of really small microloans, um, uh, 23 microloans um, now, and they, um, they did do one big one, which was a $400,000 loan to this, um, this food co-op. So um, just a great example of um, just on the ground organizing. Um, in Northern California, um, they've started something uh, called SOIL which is slow opportunities for investing locally. Um, and uh, it's not, um, it's different from the investment club model because instead of everyone putting their money in um, the same way and everyone getting the same vote, it's more just sharing due diligence, just sharing, um, oh, this is, this is what I found out about this company. And so it's a network of, of investors. Um, slow Money New NYC, they um, are developing a similar model to Soil. Um, 
this is one of our steering committee members, Marco Vangelisti. He comes from um, a traditional uh, financial background. Um, and uh, he's, he's done a bunch of uh, slow money deals, um, about eight of them um, or so, so far. So um, I can read, uh, Farmland LP is a, a all about organic farmland, um, uh, transitioning farmland to organic. Uh, Mama Chia is a company that um, has decided to um, uh, give 1% of their profits back to um, the Soil Trust, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, uh, a few other companies I'll, I'll, I'll highlight. Um, Point Reyes Compost Company. Um, uh, you know, there's really some interesting companies, a part of the mix. Um, and um, so what else do I want to say? Um, so the Soil Trust, that's, that's one of the big um, things that Slow Money National is working on right now. Um, what we're imagining with it is um, having a large number of people um, donate a small amount, um, so it's like, say $25 a piece, um, and we would pool that money together to get all of this activity that's happening around the country to um, uh, happen more um, and um, you know, be, be able to catalyze a lot more um, activity into investing in local food systems. Um, so we are right now working, we received a grant from um, uh, one of the uh, big um, uh, funders of um, progressive causes um, to work with a firm called Spitfire Communications down in DC. They work with a lot of um, uh, nonprofits um, that are larger than, than Slow Money, um, but we are working with them to, to kind of fine tune our communication strategy and um, get it in a place where we can actually start um, sharing it with people. But um, yeah, if you can think of, uh, sometimes when we talk about the Soil Trust, it's like, um, you know, the NRA every year um, gets four million people to contribute thirty-five dollars to promote, um, you know, for for gun rights. Why can't one million Americans contribute twenty-five dollars um, to build healthy local food systems? So um, that's the model the Soil Trust is based on, um, and these activities that are emerging around the country in places like I, I just talked about, but also. Um, in Texas and in Pacific Northwest, um, Santa Barbara, um, Wisconsin, uh, other places. Um, you know, so sometimes what's needed is just a little bit more of um, uh, oomph just to get things started. Um, and so uh, the Soil Trust is hoping to, to, to do just that. Um, membership, thank you, Julia. Um, so we are looking to, um, uh, to, to do our membership uh, locally, actually. So um, we don't want to have a situation where um, you're becoming a member of the national organization and um, none of that money helps to organize here. So um, uh, if you go on the Slow Money website, um, you'll see that there's a membership page and um, there's a drop down to all the chapters, Pioneer Valley being one of them. And if you um, join as a member, 50% um, of, of every dollar goes back to um, this local chapter. So um, to help put on events like this, et cetera. Um, and uh, we're working with a steering committee of all of our chapters right now to, that's, that's who developed this philosophy of, um, of membership sharing. Um, and, and it's a great, um, steering committee who's, who's really looking at like, how, how do we grow membership, how do we get more people involved, um, et cetera. So um, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's simple ways like signing the slow money principles, no cost, and then if you wanna um, support um, the work, there's that. And then I think what we're gonna do, talk about today a bit is, is how to potentially even um, you know, think about models like what Slow Money Maine is doing, North Carolina to actually get some investments to start flowing um, from a group of people here into small food enterprises. So, any quick questions? Um, yeah. yeah the membership um, is different from the Soil Trust. It's 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 completely different, and, different um, and it's different from the principles. Okay. Yeah, there are three distinct things. Um, and the membership is is really meant to be um, an organizing tool for the local chapters um, as a way to um, engage people and, um, and, and bring, that, bring them in um, the process. It's, a, it's, 
um, it's a pilot, basically. It's just starting out. Um, there's, like in Northern California, they have a few hundred members. In, in, um, in uh, North Carolina, they have a couple hundred members. But um, it's, it's not something where um, it's required to participate, let's say. You know, membership is just a way to support this overall activity right now. How much is that? It's, oh, it's $50, um, so 25 for, for the national and 25 for the local. Other investment clubs. Um, so investment club in Maine, um, no small potatoes. Um, there's an investment, investment club in St. Louis, um, and there's an investment te club in Texas, um, in Boston, um, in Arizona now. Um, the screen said four. Yeah, I, uh, we just added Arizona, I think. People put their money in. So the soil trust, what that's going to do is um, provide guarantees, um, seed capital, and um, co-investment capital with other slow money initiatives um, that are sparking up. So um, the soil trust again is a donation. It's different from membership. We haven't really we we've soft launched it. We have one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in the soil trust. But we um, and we're using that as um, uh, sort of research money primarily um, to try to get something off the ground. But again, when we launch it, we, we wanted to we wanted to try to spark um, mass participation um, in the soil trust. So right now, in terms of engagement, it's just the membership. Um, we're just signing this, the slow money principles and the membership. There's, so stay tuned on the soil trust. It's it's going to be coming out soon. Great. Well, uh, I'll turn it over to Julia and Eric Becker, who um, can talk about uh, Slow Money Boston. I helped found uh, what we called Greater Boston Slow Money, but now we're calling Slow Money Greater Boston, I it think. It still doesn't roll off the tongue. No. Um, but Julia has taken over most of the leadership uh, for the group, although I'm still um, quite heavily involved. Um, so I'm going to give a little bit of background on what we've done in Boston. Um, and then Julie is going to talk about where we are now and sort of going forward. Um, and it's great to be here, and thank you for having us. And um, I found this morning really inspiring and want to take um, that model back to Boston, because I think slow money is m about more than just financial capital. It's also about community and social capital, which is what we were um, uh, having transactions in this morning. And um, so that was really exciting. Um, so, uh, my involvement with Slow Money goes back to 2005, um, and uh, I um, am one of the founding uh, members of, of Slow Money National, but uh, it was really um, after, well, around the time of um, the first national gathering in 2009 that uh, the idea of starting a group in Boston to um, actualize it on a local level. Um, really started to come together, and in January 2010, I, I pulled together a, a steering committee, um, and then right around the same time as the national gathering in Vermont in uh, June 2010, we had our first event in Boston, which was a showcase of about a half a dozen entrepreneurs. It wasn't, um, it, they, they weren't making an ask for uh, financing at that point. They were companies that we we mm -hmm. were putting on the stage to illustrate the types of companies that would be seeking capital. Uh, if we really had a group going in Boston. Uh, we had about 90 people come out for that, which was really encouraging. And um, actually, Woody was there, and, and the new executive director at that time, Ari Durfel, were there. So that helped bring bring out people. Um, but the, the reaction w was uh, quite strong. And as a follow-up to that, we um, developed a um, more robust steering committee. There ended up being about 25 people on the steering committee, which is a little bit hard to, uh, to manage. But um, the outcome is that we, we developed a, a model of doing um, showcases where um, we brought together entrepreneurs and investors and, um, and community members who are interested in, in a more sustainable food system to hopefully catalyze the flow of capital um, into those um, those businesses, um, and um, now we're so we've had uh, two of those so far. Um, if you count the first one, I guess we have we have one coming up in two weeks again uh, um, yeah, on April twenty fourth. We have a meetup group which is um, Greater Boston Slow Money. Uh, if you search on meetup.com, 
um, and that's where we how we communicate. We've got about 300 and 400, almost. 400 people now uh, on that list. Um, so April 24th um, in Boston, in Cambridge actually, is our next um, showcase uh, for our uh, previous showcase last fall, we had, I think, seven applicants. This time we had 13 applicants for six speaking slots. Um, we've also already got about 50 people signed up to come uh, in two weeks, and we haven't really rolled out the, uh, the social media on it yet, but so we're excited at, about the quality of the, the, the um, entrepreneurs presenting um, as well as um, the interest. Um, and now I'll turn it over to Julia to talk about our investment club. Hi. Um, so I think one of the things that Eric hadn't really told you about is just sort of the evolution of the Boston chapter. And as you guys think about starting your own chapter, there are no rules and we've been sort of ebbing and flowing and we started out with this huge steering committee of 25 people and now we're down to the two of us sort of doing what we can and we're, you know, kind of ramping up to bring it back up into full steam again. Um, so what we've been doing for the last uh, year and a half is really trying to bring entrepreneurs and investors together and the showcase model was a great way for us to just get everybody in the room talking together uh, giving entrepreneurs an opportunity to find investors that um, and I've see, I saw that a bit today too that entrepreneurs don't always know where to go to get investment besides going to the bank um, so we have the showcase coming up obviously in two weeks and then the other thing that we started to do in Boston was starting an investment club so people that wanted to get a little bit more actively involved, um, not necessarily through a loan fund or through a CDFI, CDFI. Um, so we started our own investment club uh, modeling off of No Small Potatoes in Maine. And we have 14 members now. We each pulled in $2,500. And uh, we just became official about three weeks ago. And we're going to have our Next, on meeting uh, next week in anticipation of the show key, showcase to get our strategy and to get ready to launch. But we're going to hopefully be making loans of about $5,000 to local farmers and other workers in the uh, local food system to help them get that launch that they need. Um, and hopefully we will find demand. It seems like there's a lot of capital out there, but not always the entrepreneurs uh, seeking the capital. So we're hoping that we can help make those connections. You're going to talk about just non-financial, non-investment events. Oh, yes. And we do non-investment events. <laughs> um, I mean, I think part of the beauty of slow money is bringing together the community that it's not just about uh, investments. Um, so we've been putting together various different workshops and seminars. Um, a couple of months ago, we had an event on how to invest locally. So, you know, somebody like me who's got my money in, you know, some IRA account and whatever, what can I do to get my money invested more locally? I don't think the general public really knows what they can do, so we're trying to put together events to help people really engage in their community and invest in their community and learn about opportunities to be a part of their community. Um, and I think we'll, we're going to do a cash mob, maybe. Uh, basically, the notion is that everybody goes to a local shop and spends $20, and then we all go out and get a drink afterwards, uh, <laughs> which I think is a great way to support the local economy. Um, so and you know, we're still coming up with new ideas. and. You know, it's a work in progress, how to stay engaged and support our local food economy. One more thing. Oh, yes, please. So the other piece of this is that um, there is a, a national, um, there are regular calls of, of the regional leaders of chapters to share sort of best practices and what's going on in the different regions. So the innovations that are happening all around the country get distributed. So the, the cash mob idea came from Brooklyn. Um, the no small potatoes is spreading uh, from Maine. Um, there's innovation going all over the going on all over the place, and there's a way um, for for that to be shared, uh, which I think is really important. Um, but we all have the flexibility in our own regions to uh, put on events that make sense for our local economies, our food food shed. So, and with that, I think I'll turn it over to Sam. Right, to take us to the next part. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. That's for everybody. Um, we really appreciate the three of you um, being here and sharing the, the, all this exciting stuff from around the country um, and the, the, the opportunity to have to start with this context um, I think is really valuable for us. Also, if you can get to an entrepreneur showcase in Boston, I went to the last one and I highly recommend it. So next, um, we are going to have time for questions of 
all of our one, two, three, four, five speakers. Um, but first, before we do that, so that we don't just go into that, we're going to let you talk to each other a little bit about what it is that that you're looking for from this chapter. And then we're going to have a group discussion so we can hear it and we're going to write it up and we'll kind of get a temperature check about different ideas, different places we could go. And that will be a time where you can ask more questions. Um, but in, in any clarification or burning questions right now for our presenters? So we actually are uh, developing um, a program right now called Earthworm Angels. Um, it's out of the work that uh, Woody and I um, were doing at Investor Circle, which was leading an angel network. So high net worth individuals that were interested in investing in um, sustainable uh, companies, but they could be energy companies. Or, but um, Earthworm Angels is just focused on sustainable agriculture. And we're having the launch event um, for that uh, in November in Cavallo Point um, it, uh, in, in San Francisco. Um, at Cavallo Point. It's over. It's a beautiful spot. It's overlooking the Golden Gate. Um, actually, um, the guy who owns it is one of our uh, supporters, and and those. Uh, so it is. Um, we are trying to um, uh, not just pay attention to um, people who can just donate twenty five dollars, but also have more of a, a strategy for people who who want to put millions of dollars to work a year in, in this space um, and foundations, etc. So. Um, uh, but for right now, it's it's a whole bunch of things. We, um, out of that 16.5 million, one of those was um, a three million dollar investment by an individual who's starting a farm incubator outside of um, uh, outside of Portland, Oregon. So that was you know he, he read the book, he was inspired to do something. He put three million dollars to work in, in starting this farm incubator. So. Um, and then there's some other large chunks as well. So there are um, some bigger pools of money coming coming um, to play in the space. But a lot of it is is um, the two thirds of it is is really small local um, small loans. So. Okay. So um, here's the exercise. What we're going to do is um, we're going to find a partner, someone you don't know, and answer this simple. Two-part question. Uh, you have just a minute each. So I'll, I'll let you know when one minute has passed, and then after the second minute. So the first person talks for one minute, the second person talks for one minute. Can people see this? So a little closer. Um, what excites you about Slow Money Pioneer Valley? It doesn't exist yet, but what excites you about you know the possibilities? What you would like to see that would benefit us here? And then how do you see yourself being involved? Um, what would you participate in? What would you put energy into making happen? Is that clear, the question? All right, so we're going to stand up. Actually, why don't we all come into the middle of the egg, sh egg shape here. Of course, introduce yourself. Tell the person your name, where you're from. Sure. 